Learning as fast as possible as, as game developers has always been something you have been looking after. I completely understand that because I also want that. I have been a game developer for the past 4 years and I will be presenting 4 strategies you can follow in order to learn faster and more efficiently as a developer that I have tried myself and had worked amazingly as I have been a game developer for the past 4 years and had experience at Voodoo, one of the top game development companies, testing a total of 3 successful prototypes with them. Now let's start. 1. Create practical projects In this point I want to really discuss about what is better if taking more courses or creating more practical projects and of course the correct answer is creating practical projects. There is a common belief that the more courses the better, but actually the more real practice the better. In reality people won't really care about uh, how many courses you have taken or you yourself won't really care how many courses you have taken what you are gonna be taking um, what you're gonna be having in count is the different projects that you have created and the different knowledge that you have then that you have then gained of course of course courses are an amazing way to actually learn game development i'm not telling you to stop watching courses what you actually have to do is to create as many projects as possible with the knowledge you gain for every course you finish okay so basically you have to stop thinking that the more courses you watch the better it's going to be but instead what you have to understand is that the more projects that you create the better game development is more about practice than just theories uh unlike other areas and if you actually want to learn game development the best way of actually learning is practicing then of course in the middle of that practice you will come to some doubts you won't understand how to create certain features or certain parts of the game and then there is a place where um, courses will start appearing, okay? But the sequence should be the opposite of what you are probably doing. The sequence that you're probably following is take a course, then create something, and then you probably just take two, three courses, and then you create something on your own. But the, the process should be the exact opposite, meaning that you should be creating as many projects in your own as you can, and when you are feeling limited because you don't have enough knowledge, then is when courses, uh, you should start watching some courses. You should have more real experience than just a collection of theories that you may even forget in the short term. That's the key point here. 2. Don't create assets in vain. It is okay to know the basics about how assets are created, how you can create your own assets, but what you really have to understand here is that usually game developers do not create assets. If you're working at a company or if you are even creating games for yourself, you aren't gonna be in charge of creating the assets. Basically, if you're working at a company, for example, they will have some kind of designer or graphic designer that will have to create the assets. Or if you are working in your own projects, probably you are either gonna buy some pre-made assets, hire somebody to do them, to do them, or just even download some of them completely for free. So basically, what uh, is going to happen here if what you do is dedicate a lot of time in creating assets is that you are actually gonna be completely wasting your time that you could perfectly um, be spending learning game development purely game development. And again, it's a learning that, of course, is, it is completely okay to learn the basics, to understand how these are made, the different software, because they're going to give you more general knowledge that then could be perfectly applied to any game that you create. But, well, you shouldn't really become a designer that you create every single asset uh, for the games that you create, because, again, this will make you spend a lot of time, even more, in just designing than creating your game. So, in order to overcome this, what you can do is to basically use some kind of online platforms. If you look for 3D assets, 2D assets, literally wherever that you want online, you will find tons of platforms and tons of assets that you can use completely for free, even commercially free. Basically, you can use them for commercial projects without even giving credits, okay? So that is amazing. And if you can't really find something that you want for your game, you can always purchase some and it's going to be let's say quite cheap than for example hiring somebody or doing whatever you want 
But the key point here is that you have to understand that game developers don't usually create their own assets. They either buy it, they uh, or they uh, hire somebody. So stop really spending time on creating your assets, and on the other hand, start spending that time on actually creating the practical projects that we were talking about in point one. Three, focus on core gameplay. This is what will help you learn more effectively. Since the core gameplay is actually the most important part of your own game, not only is it the most important part of your game that will make it stand out from the crowd, but also by completely focusing on your core gameplay, you will understand how different games are created, you will have a general knowledge about how to create different type of games, and therefore the uh, knowledge that you gain will be much more important and you will be able to learn more efficiently and also in a, a smaller time amount. Details basically everything that is outside the core gameplay of your project isn't actually purely influential in your own success in learning. They will just consume more time and usually you won't learn anything new. Of course, details and secondary features are super important in order uh, to completely create a game. However, when you're learning, you don't really want to spend that much time in creating a bunch of secondary features in your game because they won't actually add something new to your learning. For example, if you are creating a game, why would you like to have 10 different boosters, uh, 5 different power-ups? You can just have one booster, one power-up and that will be enough. Because of course then, you can add as many power-ups and boosters as you really want, but it won't really add a lot of interesting stuff to your learning because you already understand how to create a booster and a power-up and the only thing that you're gonna be uh, doing if you increase the amount of them will be just increasing the secondary features and mechanics that your, that your game has. Of course there is literally no problem in including as many secondar secondary mechanics as you want, but the problem here is that your time is limited, okay? And if you really want to learn game dev faster, you really have to focus on what is actually important, okay? Not only in terms of your game, but also in terms of your learning. If you have correctly understood how to create one booster, you won't really gain a lot of a, a lot of important knowledge if you just add two or three boosters more. Four, publish a lot of games. If you actually want to learn faster, as I told you in several previous points, you do have to practice a lot, and practicing includes creating a bunch of different games. But people don't actually usually know how many is a lot of games or how many games should they be creating on a monthly or weekly basis. Or you have to understand that a lot of uh, game development companies, mostly mobile game development companies, what they try to do is to publish as much games as possible, not only because it is better for them to maybe know which mechanics work and which mechanics don't, but also because they are able to learn a little bit more about the market, how to create games more effectively, and what the audience is looking forward to be playing. Because the more games that you create, of course, the more knowledge you will gain. This is purely connected to the previous point, point about only focusing on the core gameplay. Because you won't be able to publish a lot of games if you don't purely focus on the core gameplay and your focus is more on creating as much uh, secondary mechanics as possible. So if you stick to focusing on the core gameplay, if you don't create your own assets and you use some pre-made assets, and if you really focus on creating practical, practical projects, you're going to be able to massively increase the amount of games that you are able to create. And basically the amount of, game, of games that you should be able to create is at least one game monthly, this will be the minimum. And when I mean a game, it's basically a game that can be, can be completely playable, that has a strong core gameplay, that is, it is in a way different to any other game, because if you just want to publish a game in the Google Play Store or in any other platforms. Of course, you can copy any other game and that's gonna literally take you a couple of hours, a couple of days. But in order you should be able to publish one game monthly that is a little bit, that it is actually a game, that it has some tweaks, that it has some things uh, that are different. But the, more, the most important thing here is that it has a strong core gameplay build. Then if you think that that amount is a little bit complicated for you, um, 
what you can do is uh one game every two months that would be the minimum i would think that it nowadays would be okay but also this will really depend on which type of games you want to build because it's not the same if you want to build console games or pc games than if you want to build mobile games okay but the point here really applies to literally any type of game the thing here is that you are able to create at least one or two games monthly that have a strong core gameplay and you won't really for example be able to create um a strong core gameplay if you just follow courses okay that's also other thing that you have to consider you will do have to uh spend time on your own without taking a look at courses and actually thinking about a uh, building a strong core gameplay with some different mechanics than the games that already exist so by following all these four strategies you are going to be able to learn game the faster not only are you going to be able to learn faster but also more efficiently and this means that you're going to be able to get a job faster or that you're going to be able to publish uh, better games that will eventually uh, make you earn some interesting amount of money so this was pretty uh, a pretty good video in terms of comprehensive video uh because i tried to summarize a lot of important information that was that is out there on the internet uh, I tried to sum it up in just one video. So the value that you were able to get out of this video was just amazing. Uh, if that was a, if that was the case, please consider subscribing to the video, liking, liking it as well. And see you in the next one. Bye bye.